Hi, and welcome back. I've had this little A5 pad of watercolor paper from Faber Castell lying around for a while, and I actually haven't used it yet. Um, so let's give it a go. Um, as I said, it's an A5 pad. Let me focus on this. There's 10 sheets, it's a 300 GSM, acid free. And that's about the info that I can find on this one. It doesn't really say anything on the back side here and on the inside of the cover is nothing. So I assume that this is another cellulose pad. It has a dark green background here around the picture. And this is the the drawing that is on the Albert Dura pencils as well. And it is actually what is on all their art. Uh, great stuff. So I have quite high expectations of, of this paper because it is from their art line. The surface is, yeah, it's medium smooth, I'd say. It has a little bit of a texture to it. So I think it is kind of between a knot surface and a hot press surface. It has that stiffness to it that a hot press can have. So, and the back side is about the same. So it, it, there's nothing to gain by, by using the back side. So, um, yeah, and it's spiral bound. And there is no, um, up here at the top. Oh, it flickers so bad with all this white. Come on. There is no perforation line up here. And I actually did try and pull a page out of here and that didn't work at all. So you would probably have to cut it off if you if you want the paper out of here to, to work on. And, um, so um, let us uh, let us put it through the paces. I did the this test of Hannah Müller's Britannia Britannia paper yesterday. It's kind of stiff too. It's also a hot press. Uh, it is a hot press. After I, I filmed, I tested out some alcohol markers on here and that worked kind of okay too. I'm not sure you should use alcohol markers on watercolor paper, even hot press, uh, <laughs> because it absorbs a lot of, uh, what would I say if I could talk, uh, it, a lot of the ink from the, the marker, so they will it will go dry pretty quickly. Let me try and play a little bit with the light there. So let us uh, try the watercolor on this. So I'm using a water brush and my Van Gogh paints. And I have high expectations as I said. It's quite absorbent, so it uh, it dries quickly. This can be good or bad, depending on each person using it. Because um, it can be good if you want the paint to stay right where you put it. And it can be a challenge if you want to put a bit of paint on and do a gradient this way where you just add water from the water brush oh my goodness uh, it flickers bad today is it this one again no uh, it wasn't that one today uh, maybe this one it's usually just one of my lamps that cause things to flicker uh, have to be like that the sun is not shining as much as yesterday so I don't get so much daylight. So yeah, just working wet on dry works a bit. It's not as good as it could be. But it moves okay if things are uneven you can always go over it and 
I move it up again. So the pigment does stay on the surface as we would like it to. Detailing is okay. Take the fine brush strokes, okay? It's maybe not quite as easy to work on as the Britannica, Britannia, whatever it's called, the Hannah Moodle from yesterday. I'm trying to add some. But the line stays okay. It, it holds onto the lines fairly okay. So I can probably just glaze over that tail part there. Let's see how this goes. Ah, well, that took the lines away. Should have let it dry some more. But that's the thing. This is why I do these tests is to see what what can I do and what can't I do? Do I need to let things dry a lot or can I just go over and yeah, I should have let that dry a bit more. So. Oh, that was not the color I expected. That was Payne's gray. I thought that would be a brown of sorts. Just add some brown. Now this is easier for me to get hold of than the, the Hannah Muller hot press. I can get ha Hannah Muller note on, what's it called, um, rough without any problems. But, um, but the hot press is really not easy to, to get. So things doesn't move a lot on this paper, which is kind of interesting. And that is that's good for small detailed work like this. Should probably find the zoom a bit here. Because this is just like a little painting. Which could be something you would do if you did like botanical work or something. And then you work in and find details. <coughs> so it would be okay for that. And that's the kind of paper I actually been looking for because I got lots of rough and not surface paper, but they because of the texture of the paper, it's it's difficult to to do fine details.
this thick brush paint is not super good for for fine details. Oh, <laughs> this chameleon got up, got to bed too late, got rims on his eyes now. So yes, for watercoloring it seems okay. I could make it go through the paces of a big wet and wet wash. Um, but I got paper for that already. So if I should do it, it should more be for the sake of trying. Oh, I, I could sit and play with this all day getting it all the details I want. Um, let's see, I've got a lot of water here, in the, create a background type of thing. Let's try some other colors. No, I can't tell if it's the uh, the paint or the paper that causes things not to flow all that well here. Uh, this is a student grade color, and I haven't used it for wet and wet techniques before. I think our student grade paints doesn't have that exploding flow, but it can also be the paper. So uh, let me pause the camera and now I'm curious because uh, and I'll get my core watercolors out. Let us see here. Core is an expensive American brand of watercolor. And, um, they use a, a different binder called aerosol. Um, that m makes things usually explode a lot. It just kind of creeps across the paper. It, it does it better than the... Oh, what's it called? The Van Gogh colors. But not as much as I've seen them do. So the paper is definitely also a factor here. that so it's not fantastic for wet and wet it might be good for for people who are starting wet and wet who hope to predict somewhat how the um, how the paint is is going but for people who want the, the color to explode across the, the wet area, mm, not so much. Normally, this is the purple I'm just adding here is dioxin purple, and that normally just go poof and fills in the whole wet area. We'll get to that when we get some different paper. It's in the mail. Amazon shipped my stuff today. Should be here on Monday. Today's Thursday. If I'm lucky, it shows up tomorrow and my Jackson order should show up anytime. So, good for detailed work. Even though it doesn't look like it, it is just because I've been talking and not. Mm, doing my best but the lines kind of stay where they are for watercolor so for regular watercolor it is definitely approved it is uh, that's the thing about art supplies they have a range of things they're good for 
this is not because this is a bad paper. It's really difficult to find a watercolor paper that does wet and wet very well at the same time as it is also doing good details. So um, it's it's definitely approved. I have lots of paper that is good for wet and wet if I feel that urge coming on sometime. So let's try watercolor markers. This is my eco line markers. Greenery here. Some random green shapes. I'm I'm on purpose not filling it in because I want to see how well I'm trying to get all that red out of my brush. How well the lines dissolve, if at all. not particularly well. You can pull it out so you get kind of a line wash, but not as good as the Britannia yesterday. I kind of expected this because this is a fairly absorbent paper. Now the paper is wet and I'm just trying to add some green. No, the lines definitely stays no matter what. So if you have this kind of dye-based watercolor pens, if you want a flat wash here, you would definitely have to scribble it off on some plastic and then lift it in on the paper with with the brush. So not good for these. I'm not going to do anything more because I'll just get annoyed. But I'm really happy with it as watercolor paper. So, I picked out some Albert Durer pencils today. In my opinion, the best watercolor pencils on the market at the moment. Um, now we're, it does curve, but it hasn't really buggled us in, so bad. So let me try another. See, I like uh, doing chameleons at the moment. I think they're so much fun. Oh, can you even see this? Well, that's just the outline now. Get something going here. I love chameleons, but they're a bit challenging to keep as as pets. One thing is that they don't like, in general, to be handled a lot. Most of them, not at all. And the other thing is it can be quite challenging to get them the right conditions so that they really thrive in a terrarium. There's a few species you can keep, and yeah, you can keep most species, but some of them also threaten the nature and stuff, so. A little bit in two minds about them as, as pets. The biggest challenge is to make sure they have enough water to drink because they don't really drink out of a bowl. So you have to kind of mist their terrarium a few times a day. But on the other hand, it shouldn't also be to damp in there because then they can get in fungus infections. So. Let's 
just one of the challenges. They also, they are strictly only eating insects, so at least in some parts of the world, uh, here in Scandinavia in the winter time, it can be a little bit of a challenge to get them enough feed on insects through winter. I have had people hand them back at this pet store because they couldn't afford buying that many insects. Because the big ones that are the ones that are the easiest to keep, they eat a lot. There's not lots of energy in insects. So, and we know Albertura lines dissolve easily, spreads out nicely. Now this should work. Come on, this is their own paper with their own with their own products. And it does. It works just great. There's no lines remaining at all. This is brilliant. <coughs> and again, it, it, it's a little bit of a challenge to make an even surface over a larger area. But that could also be my brush. The Overall, this part, I'm really happy with this. That is, uh, that's really brilliant. It's uh, nice and easy to, to work with. Yeah, this is really nice working on with this. That's for sure. But it also makes sense that they they produce a paper that is good for detailed work, since their main watercolor product is, is these the Albertura watercolor pencils. Or one of the that's the the main watercolor product anyways. So as usual Tala Castello delivers again. This is this is brilliant. I'm not as excited as I was yesterday, but this this is good paper still. It doesn't quite have me over the moon as the Hannah Miller paper yesterday, I admit that. But if I had tried this first, I would have been quite ecstatic.
Got a couple of the pads of Fabricus Dell paper. I got their mixed media and I got a sketch pad. So <clears throat> Definitely works quite fine. The only thing I got with this pad was it didn't say that it was aid resistant. It didn't say archival on it. So that could mean that it turns crispy over time. As it is uh, acid free, it shouldn't go yellow. So, the last thing I want to try, uh, maybe not quite the last, but something I want to try is here's polychromos pencils. And, um, so, let's see if it works with just ordinary. Pencils, color pencils. If I zoom in, you can see the texture of the paper now. You see, it's not entirely smooth. It has a bit of of a texture. Most watercolor papers will have some kind of texture to them. So yeah, I'd say this is a very smooth knot surface. And that makes it if you really want to to use colored pencils on this, you need a lot of patience, or you need some um, some cysted or some mineral spirit of some sort to to add to it to to smooth out the pigments and get them in the into the texture of the paper. And this is why people use, in general, hot press paper for colored pencils instead of not or even rough watercolor paper. Uh, it, it takes the, the colors well enough and they blend okay together. But this would take me probably 20 or 30 layers if I... Uh, or pushing real hard if I wanted all that white to disappear. That could take a color pencil and go in and do details on your your watercolor work if you like. Because if you, you make a, a line then it, it goes into the paper well enough. Oh. It's 
funny because I really haven't used color pencils on just regular paper for a, a good while. I pretty much only used it on pastel mat, which is totally different to work on. So, color pencil, so so. Watercolor pencils, absolutely any day. So for watercolor and watercolor pencils, it is brilliant. It is meh for, for watercolor pens. And a little me also for just regular color pencils. I would like to take a fine liner to this. And I'm using here a small fine point pit pen. Sometimes it is nice to have something to go in and do some detailing with. You need to go in and define a line like here. Let me zoom in again. See, this line is maybe a little jagged, so we could go in and just define that a little better. Clean it up a bit. And this works just fine. Try and do something with his eye here. So they work okay on here as well. I'm at it. Let's see if the brush pen can do something here. They can. And let me see if how. Oh. Even a layer I can color in with these. Nah, that streaks. It's too absorbent to, to use with the with the pit pens. You can go in and as I did with some details and maybe fill in some small areas. But large areas not so good. <laughs> Let me open this up and move that away. And then let's grab here a alcohol marker and see how this goes. That streaks too, but not as bad as the pit pen. So if you're short of some color, which you have in alcohol marker, you can use it. But it streaks a bit, so not over large areas. And it actually only goes through. That's impressive. So my overall verdict of this is that it is absolutely good watercolor paper and some line work with pens and markers is okay. Colored pencils, mm, not my first choice of, of stuff to use here. Watercolor pencils, absolutely good. Wet and wet technique, eh, eh, take a a course of paper for that. Fine detail work with watercolors. Really good. So overall, com 
compared to the price, it's not all that expensive. And to me, at least, it's quite easily available. This would be something I could definitely do watercoloring on. I would use it with watercolor and watercolor pencils. Absolutely. Any day. And maybe bring in some other things to, to do with details and stuff. But for large areas, absolutely something watercolor. Like, and not watercolor pens. They, it didn't feel good on here. For the watercolor pens, I'd say hand mirror is the better choice. So, I think that's what I gotta say about this. So thank you all for watching and stay tuned. I am I got more stuff coming and I will probably get back at doing some speed paints again. I have had a little bit of a break doing some other things and um, maybe during Easter I have time to paint. Next week I'm a little busy the first part of the week so let's see how it goes. Take care. Give me a like and a subscribe, please. Bye-bye.